begin our meditation on God's Word in the powerful name of Jesus. Dear Christian friends, well, about a, a couple weeks ago, I had the pleasure of going out on Lake Erie on a, a charter fishing boat with my brother-in-law and four of his friends. Um, one of them was an elderly man by the name of Terry. He was, he was in his 70s. And uh, so we're headed out on Lake Erie. It's the crack of dawn, right? And, and uh, we were told by the captain it's going to be about an hour until we get to our fishing spot. And so everybody settled into their seats for the ride. And, and it was a bumpy one. Uh, the waves were at least two feet high, so the engine's roaring, it's loud, we're bouncing along through the lake, and it was just after about 20 minutes where the captain, he turns and he yells to us, he says, hey, you better check on this guy. And he's pointing to Terry, and, and Terry's in his seat, and, and, and his head's back, and, and it's just bobbing in the waves really violently and his arms are bouncing on the side like that and I mean we're just wondering what, what's wrong with him I mean he, he can't be asleep I mean who could sleep with that kind of noise and that bouncing and so well, my brother-in-law Danny gets up and he, and he tries to rouse Terry he's jostling him and pretty firmly and nothing the guy's out cold and, and they're saying his name, Terry, Terry, no response. And, and that's when the captain started to throttle down. He says, I think we better head back. And we're all kind of scared. And, and so, um, you know, the, the Terry finally opens his eyes. And, and my brother-in-law says, can you move your mouth? Because we, we thought he was having a stroke. Um, and, and he moved his mouth a little bit. He says, raise your left arm raised his left arm, raise your right arm, and he raised his, his right arm, and, and the boat's stopped by now, and it's calm, well, the waves are still going, but the engine is, is a lot quieter, and Terry just stops and he says, well, what's the matter, can't a guy get some sleep around here? And yeah, we're all just shocked. I mean, we're, we're all laughing now because we just couldn't believe Terry was sleeping with all of that wave action and the noise and, and it was a little scary for a little bit too because we thought something was really wrong I mean how could that guy sleep like that well the story seemed to fit with our gospel lesson today where you have the disciples out on the Sea of Galilee and, and Mark says that this great windstorm arose and that there's water coming in the boat and it's it's about ready to be swamped, and the disciples, they're fighting for their lives, and yet, Mark says that Jesus is, he's in the, in the front of the boat, in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Where is the stern in the back? I, the stern's in the front? Either way, I, he's sleeping. And you just wonder, how could Jesus be sleeping through all of that? Well, there's got to be a couple reasons if you think about it. One is that he is probably literally exhausted. Now, we had gotten a lot of sleep that night before we went on fishing, but with Jesus, it's a different story. Jesus had been involved doing all kinds of ministry that day. And, and when you, you're teaching and preaching and using, you know, your, your mind and, and, and bringing a message, it's exhausting. And... and um, and so he's tired. What do you do when you're tired? You sleep. And he's at peace with things, even though he, you know, is maybe even aware of his surroundings because he knows and trusts perfectly in his heavenly Father's care. Jesus knows that this storm has nothing on him. He, he knows his destiny. He knows and he remembers why his Father sent him into the world in the first place. He wasn't going to die out on that lake. He knew that his father had brought him into this world to, to go through that hell and fury that we deserve for our sins that none of us could bear. And so he knows and he trusts completely and perfectly in his heavenly father's care. And so Jesus sleeps. When you think about it, the twelve... They didn't need to be that scared with Jesus in the boat, did they? If, they? 
they just remembered who this man really was. Or if they just thought for a little bit about where they had been with Jesus to this point. In his ministry, they had seen him doing awesome miracles. And, and they had seen him preaching and teaching awesome sermons. They saw Jesus show complete authority over demons. Complete authority over disease. And they had seen and listened to him, again, teach and preach with authority. And that message was directed at them as well. And yet, for some reason, this, this storm on the sea, this seems to be in a whole new category of miracles that, well, that Jesus hasn't done yet. They're really not sure about how this is going to turn out. Again, it seems like none of what Jesus has done and taught is really sunk into their hearts and minds. They forgot who this man really is. Well, when, when we encounter the storms of life ourselves, we, we have every reason, don't we, to trust perfectly in, in the Heavenly Father's plans for us and in Jesus' love for us. We have every reason to have full confidence of Him as He, as he takes a hold of the helm in, in our life. And, and as we think back to where we've been and where he's taken us in his word, think back to what we've been reflecting on over the past two to three weeks in our series. It was way back on Trinity Sunday where Jesus reminded us in his word that he is a triune God together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, that they love us with a many-sided love. We, we witnessed a, a double baptism where where Jesus, through the water and the word, took two little ones and strengthened their faith or, or brought them into his kingdom. And you remember how he has adopted us into his family of believers, too. We, we think back to uh, the week after that where Jesus taught us about the perfect rest that we can have for our souls and the, the peace and rest we have, the knowledge of sins forgiven, and how one day we'll enjoy the perfect rest of heaven and and, and then last week we saw God will use his powerful word to get us there. That seed of his word with its all by itself power in it to create and strengthen us in the faith and draw us to himself. And on and on and on. All these things Jesus keeps teaching us and telling us. Our worship theme today is how our gracious God is with us through all the storms of life. The only question is, are we with him? In other words, what is God to us really? If you could take out the insert that you have with all the hats on it, it's going to get us helping thinking about who our God really is and what role he has in our life. Imagine if you're hat shopping. You know, not, not for yourself though, but for God. What, what hat would you put on his head? I mean, maybe the first one in the upper left-hand corner, maybe that's the hat you put on his head, or, you know, that uh, um, academic hat. After all, the disciples called him the teacher, right? He knows everything. Is he the one, though, that we just go to once in a while when we, when we need answers to the big questions in life? Or, or is he like a policeman who's just waiting for us to, to break his law and come down on us? Maybe someone might put the chef's hat on him. He's, he's the one who we look to uh, uh, to provide us with things that we, we want to eat and to drink, but then maybe complain when he's not as generous as, as we'd like him to be. Or maybe he's like Father Christmas down there in the lower left, someone who we look to and would like uh, to give us all kinds of things that we can own and enjoy. Or maybe down in the bottom right, he's the one who's kind of like that physician we turn to when we, when we, are, when we are sick and when we need healing. Or, or maybe up in the top right corner, he's the one we put a magician's hat on because, God, we're going to need you at some point, and uh, we're going to have to get a miracle from you. You know, and there's an element of truth to all of those different hats, aren't there? God is certainly all those things, but people miss the point, don't they, if they think that God is just someone they need once in a while to get them out of a jam. 
If they do, they're really missing the point, right? God isn't someone we just need once in a while. That would imply that we can do without him once in a while. But in his word, through the Apostle Paul, remember what God said to the Athenians? It's, it's in him that we live and move and have our being. He isn't just someone we need once in a while. He is our life. He is the reason your heart is pumping right now. The reason your, your lungs are working. He's the reason the sun is shining and that the rain falls. That, that we, we see harvest and seed time and, and the seasons continue. He's, he's the one who lets us partner with him in order to make new life in the form of little babies. The truth is, again, God isn't just someone we need once in a while. He indeed is our life. And, and once in a while, moments come along in life, much like the disciples out on that storm in Galilee, where we, we bump into things that are much bigger than us, and we realize how we really do need Jesus more and more. And we need to abide with him in his word more and more. As many years later, Peter would write in his first epistle, cast all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. As Paul writes to the Romans, saying, we know that God works in all things for the good, for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Along with the psalmist, we declare that all my times all of it, my whole life is in your hands. And so the disciples, they really did have it wrong when they cried out, don't you care if we drown? The great irony is that in the midst of that storm and in the midst of the storms in all of our lives, there is no one who cares more than our Savior Jesus. And we can always trust God to do the very best for us. And the reason that is, is because he's already done the best for us. Yes, God in love sent his son Jesus. He went to the cross in order to rescue and save us from sin, death, and the devil. On Good Friday, it turns out Jesus did wear a hat, didn't he? But it wasn't a hat of his own choosing. Remember how the Roman soldiers had twisted together that crown of thorns and they pressed it on him, not in honor, uh, but to make a mockery of him. But Jesus went forth courageously and willingly and laid down his life to redeem and save and rescue us from sin and, and death and the devil and to make us his own, purchased by his own blood. And, and it's that love of God in Christ Jesus that binds together all of God's attributes, his, his wisdom and power and, and his goodness. God's love is that attribute that binds all the rest together. And it reminds us that God is present to use every single one of his attributes in the interest of helping and, and saving and loving us in all the best ways in every situation in life. And so the storm was raging on Galilee, and the disciples were, were, were all spazzing out, and they're crying out in prayer. And Jesus answered their prayer for help. Jesus, we're told, just got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind stopped. The, the winds obeyed his command. The, the waves obeyed his very command. And, and the lake, the Sea of Galilee, was like a sheet of glass. And there was a great calm, Mark says. God had answered their prayers. He had compassion on them. Jesus had mercy on them. And, and he saved and rescued them. And then he turned to his disciples and he says, He says, Why are you so afraid? you still lack faith? And with this question, he, he wasn't denying that his disciples had faith at all. He just wonders what they were doing with it. And in an instant, he 
He both shamed them and, and he encouraged them, didn't he? They were cut to the heart, and yet there he was, the one who had done something for them that day that they would never, ever forget, the one who had saved them. And they were filled with awe, Mark says, and they said to one another, who is this then? That even the wind and the sea obeys him. Well, it's Matthew, Mark, and Luke that all record this event in Scripture. And they all stop with the same question of the disciples. They end their account asking, who is this man? Now they knew. Now the disciples were exposed to, to a, a Jesus, a, a whole new Jesus. Uh, this was the man now who could turn to them and suddenly say, I am God. And yet he never had <coughs> any pity. He, he did it without making any claims. They just saw what he did. And, and they feared him. And not in the sense of, of being afraid, but they just had this reverent awe and, and love and respect for him. They, they loved him. They they placed their faith in him, and they trusted in him for everything. And, and so can we. Uh, along with the hymnist, we'll sing in just a, after the offering, Lord, when the tempest rages, I need not fear. For you, the rock of ages, are always near. Close by your side abiding, I fear no foe. For when your hand is guiding, and in peace I go. God continue to be the anchor uh, for your life and for your soul. May he continue to, to carry you and guide you and help you navigate through this life um, until we reach the, those calm, and joyful, peaceful shores of heaven. God grant this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please rise. We continue now on page 20 in front of the red hymnals and sing the song, Created Me.